Greetings everyone, through here, welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, we're going to see Snowflake Database Change Management Kit Integration. As always, link in the description below. All the scripts are available for you to reproduce this demonstration. Now, Git is a very powerful uh, tool and powerful capabilities for teams looking to build data engineering pipelines, versioning their code in a repository like a GitHub, Bitbucket, and being able to integrate that in Snowflake at runtime in a dynamic fashion. Let's jump into the tutorial. There is an option to leverage the UI for creating a Git repository integration. Now, you can obviously do this using a script, but for today, we'll do the creation using the UI. It's a very streamlined way of doing that. Go ahead and click on Git repo. Give this a repo name, tutorials. For the repository URL, go to your Git repo and grab the URL. In my case, we're leveraging the Tutorials Demo Hub public repository. This does have the scripts we want to integrate. Grab the public URL, paste that. Next, you're going to need uh, an API integration to, to create the API integration. Uh, first, you need uh, a secret. Essentially, your password or your token to access the Git repo. Create a Git secret, put in your username and password. Assuming you have your secret, the next thing you're going to want to do, and I've done this already, so I might not run the scripts, but just to illustrate what's happening, create an API integration, call this Git API integration. It takes a couple of uh, parameters. Again, I did this already, so I'm not running this entire scripts here, but you get the point. Run this. This should create a Git uh, API integration. Once you have the Git API integration created, the last thing you're going to want to do is to actually create a repo from your Snowflake instance to talk to Git. You can do this by leveraging the script, like I mentioned before, or you can do this in the UI. If you're going to do this with a script, you're going to do create Git repo, give it your repo name, specify your origin. This is the repository you want to pull from, specify API integration, create it from above, specify credentials, which should be your Git secret and any comments you want. Alternatively, you can use uh, the UI, specify your API integration, select the database for creating this. Go ahead and create that repo. Interestingly, as I mentioned, this was created already. Let's see the SQL. This is the SQL, essentially the same SQL we saw uh, earlier. Now, where does that repo persist? It persists within the schema. Go back to databases, uh, DemoDB. Remember, that's the database we used you would see an entry for Git repository and the specific Git repository in this case is Tutorials Demo Hub Git Repo. Very, very powerful. This was done a few weeks back, actually. Here is a Git repo. Taking a look at this, it does uh, give us the ability to select the branches. If you have different branches for your Git workflow, you can always select that. Go back to File Explorer. This repo has a couple of things. There is the folder called DCM database change management, which has a script we need. Open that up. There are two SQL statements here. The whole goal of this is your developers are working within Visual Studio Code. They're working within the Git UI. They're checking in code to their different repos and different branches. From there, we want to be able to point to that repo and the branch, pull that script over and execute that within Snowflake. The first time you create a Git repo, you can always do a fetch. The fetch is going to go in, look at your repo, and synchronize that to the Snowflake instance if there are changes. Now, if there are no changes, obviously, it's not going to fetch anything for you. We've done a fetch. This is up to date. If I add a new files into Git, you come in, you can always do a fetch, and they should uh, get you your new files. If you want to drop the repo, you're always welcome to drop that. If you're following along, you can describe the repo, you can alter the repo, show all the branches, you can ls the branches if you want. This will give you the different options for seeing the branches. Some folks prefer the scripts. It does provide a powerful way to interact with your Git uh, repo. Now, one thing we can do, like I mentioned before, is we want to execute that script to create that database with the corresponding tables. Right-click on this. Snowflake has this concept of execute immediate. But if I execute this, it's going to execute whatever is in this script using my Snowflake environment. Alternatively, you can do the same thing using SQL. Execute immediate from pointing to a Git repo, going to the branch main, the folder, and execute this TD 
SQL script. Now, let me go back here. I will execute this from the UI. Let's click execute. The reason any database here called others DB is going to do this in real time. Execute this, execute the meter from. It gives you the preview of what is being executed. Execute immediate. Now that script is getting executed. What I expect for this to do one would be to create a new database and load that with data coming from an S3 bucket that is getting executed. Open that up. We should have uh, three tables. Uh, there should be more tables and those tables uh, should be getting loaded with uh, data all coming from the Git repo. Executed media from file has been completed. Verify that by doing a refresh. We now have a database created, others DB, customers, and it should be hopefully loaded with data. Now, this is a very simple illustrative script. Uh, one thing to consider that folks always ask about this is um, when you work with Git, there are a couple of things to be aware of. Are you doing declarative style processing? Are you doing imperative style processing? You can read up on that. I've left some links in the description below. Declarative style, you are dropping and recreating your tables, declaring what you want the state of your database should be. There is imperative where you do author, keep existing data, existing tables, and add changes. It depends on what your use case is or what your workflow that you prefer. You can either go declarative or imperative. If you're not aware of those, check in the resources. There will be uh, links to explain the differences around declarative versus imperative stuff. But what we just saw there was pulling a script, use the execute immediate from command and being able to execute that to create our objects. Now, you might want to automate this instead of having to come in like I did every time open up the ui and do execute uh, immediate from what you can do is put this into a task in snowflake a task that runs every day every morning and executes a refresh of your branches and runs the scripts to uh, create the table and the objects that are needed the last thing i call out if you don't want to do things from the ui the way i did you can come back into the repo open up the script one more time go to database uh, change management copy that into a worksheet. It's going to open up a worksheet and you can obviously directly execute it from the worksheet as well. Now there is a limitation. I'm sure you're asking, what if I make a change? Uh, let's actually do that. If I come in here and I make a change and say, uh, update it just for the sake of it. We've made a change, commit that change without a lot of uh, things to it. Now we have the script that has been updated. Uh, go back to the UI, fetch for a new script. We now should see the new script has been updated. Last modified was 38 seconds ago. This gives you the ability to make the changes in Git, commit your changes, and then fetch from SnowSite to get that updated. The, the drawback is the bi-directional update. Can you make changes from here and then push that back to Git? As of right now, of making this demo, you cannot, but that doesn't mean that capability is not coming. What I'll encourage you, depending on when you're watching this video, Things are changing very fast. Go ahead, read the latest documentation from the Snowflake website. Links again will be in the description below. This is a very powerful high level overview on showing you how to make changes in Git, create your connection, being able to pull that and execute those scripts directly in Snowflake. DevOps, CI, CD, data engineering is a whole body of work in itself. We're just scratching the surface here. Versioning is a piece of it and different teams have best practices. They have workflows. They have ways in which their code and development paradigms do work. Take that into consideration. Automate as much as possible with, with Snowflake tasks to fetch scripts and, and execution of those scripts. Think about your branching strategy. This tutorial doesn't recommend a branching strategy. You probably have a way you do your branching and merging and pull requests. You're testing and your validation, how you promote things from a lower environment to your production or to a higher end of environments. Those are things you have to think about going beyond the basics. But uh, hopefully this was helpful. Step by step, you can follow along. Links to all of this will be in the description below. As always, this has been Fru here with Demo Hub. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end. I'll see you in the next demo.